Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, I said that I was gonna wait for my magnets to get here before I kept going, but I had an idea. My magnets haven't got here, but I wanted to work on it. So fired up the camera to show you what I was thinking. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna go on this page or not, but anyway. So I thought about just making a large side pocket. Uh, that was just slightly shorter than the page and then do a little notch cut out here. But then I thought, and I cut it and I made it, but then I thought, well, what if I make this also a flap? So it's a pocket and a flap, which I do a lot, but usually they're a lot smaller. So I cut this piece to go this way, but then I had another thought, and that was instead of making it flip this way, maybe I would make it flip that way, um, because I already have this one. So let me cut, so if this pocket, which it is, all right, so to make the pocket, I cut a piece five and a half by five and a half and scored it a half inch on three sides. And then I made this flap, which is five and a half by four and a half. But I think what I need to do is make it five by five. So this is five. And if I'm going to have it flip up, I just need. Yeah, five by five. Okay, so I'm gonna hang on to this because I'm sure I'll use it somewhere else. And let me cut a piece five by five. And I'm sorry I really didn't do an introduction. This is our Design With Me series, where basically I'm just working on an album and recording while I do it, so you can sort of see the process, which is kind of how I do a lot of my stuff, but this one's sort of official. We're using Moonchild by Prima as the paper, and Artisan Cardstock from Country Craft Creations in Navy is the base. Now I have this pocket and okay, I want to do it. Hang on. All right, so I want the opening of the pocket to go to the side. See if I'd been planning ahead on this, it probably would have come out better, but that's all right. I could actually wrap that. No, I'm gonna put it right on top. Okay, so let me do that. It's, I didn't. I never actually finished the pocket because I got this idea. All right, so I am going to trim and miter these corners. So I'm going to treat this so far just like a regular pocket. I'm going to put the insides down. Whoops, well, that was more glue than I wanted. glue that corner closed. I used so much glue. Okay. Now, okay, I want to make sure I do this right. All right. So I want that to the top and I want that there. Okay. So that's going like that. And 
this is another piece that's going to require a magnet. However, there's a magnet on the other side, so we'll probably try to work the two magnets as one. Okay, so, oops, let me just double check, because I turned it. Okay, so that goes like that. That goes like that. Okay. Probably ought to have cut the the little brown thing part out, but I find it easier to do after I mat, and I don't really know yet what I'm going to use for mat. So let's now test fit this again. I don't think this is actually going to be the page. Okay. I don't know if you can see that it doesn't quite line up at the score mark, but that's all right. I'm just going to rescore. This, again, I don't think that's going to go there because I have a flap there. I already have something there. This could go here. It's fairly bulky. Or maybe a little further back. Oops. Where's that one that we did? Already, so there's that one. This one here. No, I want to put it on this side because this is the opening. Not there because I have a side pocket there. Here, right at the back. Why not? Okay. I had that piece there. I was thinking of that for the inside back cover. I'm not sure though. And let's see what I do with my scissors. Oops. That's all right. I'm just going to taper these corners. so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm putting this um, not centered. I'm putting it a little bit more towards the spine than the outside because I want to have room for, um, for me to put something in it, but I don't want it too close to the spine either. That's a pocket. And we will use a magnet on this as well. I like that. All right. And now let's 
let's think about what's next. Um, as you can see, we're gonna do something a little different. Let me see if I can slide this over a little bit. Um, welcome back. We are still working on the Prima Moonchild album. And I'm working on a page. I got started uh, on my own and now I'm gonna, let me turn on this light. There we go. Um, whoops. Um, so as you can see, I've got started so you didn't have to watch me do this, but let me explain what we have here. Let me see, I, mean, I feel like this is probably in the way, but we're gonna need it in a second. Put it down here. Okay, so this is gonna be a flap that's going to flip up. And what I've done, this piece is gonna be um, five by five and a half. Put the five inch side on the uh, top of your scoreboard and score it a half an inch. So there's your flap. Then what you need to do is cut the mats for both the inside and outside uh, of this flap. And you're gonna cut those at four and three eighths and five and three eighths. Four, four and three eighths by five and three eighths. You're gonna need one for the inside and one for the outside. Okay, and then uh, you don't have to do this step, but this is what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to center this on the inside, on the on the bottom. Like when this flips up, that's going to be what's there. I'm going to cut this hole using my Sizzix and a circle die, and then I'm going to cover it with vellum. And I want to put the vellum under the mat. But in order to get all these mats and things to line up, I want to cut them as one. So what I've done is I've used my post-it tape You've seen me use this before, and taped all these things together. So I've got the, the two mats, I've centered the die, it's a Sizzix die, one of these, and you can use any die you have, you can cut it by hand, you can not cut it at all, uh, you can use a, a silhouette if you've got one or something like that, but this is how I'm doing it, and it may be all wrong, there may be an easier way, but this is how I'm gonna do it. So I've got it all set up, and I'm going to run it through my machine. Okay, and this is a Sizzix Big Shot. Um, you don't have to have one of any die cutting machine, I'm sure would do the trick. Now, let me just pull this back. I don't know if you can see it, but I don't have a lot of clearance here, so. cutting through a lot of layers, so I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times and hope for the best here. Looks like it's cutting them. Ooh. Okay. All right. Hopefully that did the trick. of it really stuck the post-it tape down and see how rough that cut is I still have to figure out what's going on with my cutter I'm back. sorry I got interrupted there while I was doing this and it's actually a couple of hours later for me so let's see Top two layers definitely cut, and this layer cut. Okay, good. All right, so this is gonna be the, the inside mat. And okay, I might have done better to use washi tape than this 3M tape. If you've got washi, you might wanna use that, because this got stuck down pretty hard by the the pressure of the cutting machine. It's okay, but I think uh, I think washi would have been a better choice. Okay. 
Now I could have glued this front one and then cut it, but I wasn't sure I wanted my machine to go through the glue. Here, for the die, I should probably say. Okay, there we go. All right, let me put my die away. notice on mine that the um, it made a little dent but I'm okay with that um, the I'm drawing a blank the tab here is a little wide and that's because I did a dry fit on my page and I just needed to make it a little wider to make it fit properly okay so this is gonna go on the outside and they're gonna go even with the cut opening and then on the inside, I'm going to take and glue a piece of vellum, which, uh, let me go ahead and cut that. You can, you can use a scrap if you've got one, anything that'll, that's big enough to just cover that hole. So now that is gonna go there. And then this piece is gonna go there, all right? And then we have sort of a sheer um, hole there and then it'll flip up and when it's closed it'll reveal this image here through the hole. See that? Now this is not wide enough as you can see top to bottom because of the way it laid on the paper there was no way to cut it the full four and a half or four and three eighths depth. So I'm gonna put it centered on the page and I'll put a strip of something top and bottom. All right, let's get going with this. I've already inked the outer edge of this, but I need to ink the inner circle. And again, I'm using Distress Ink Vint Victorian Velvet. I'm inking everything pretty lightly. I don't want a lot of ink showing. So there's that one. Might as well do this. Now this one's dark, so there's not a lot of ink needed. I just want to hide the, the white core of the paper a little bit, tone it down some. And again, on the inside. Save these three circles. I'm sure we'll find a use for those. Let's do this one first. And this is a directional print. The one I'm using, if you're using a directional print, be careful of that as you go along. And again, we're going to use our art glitter glue. This glue is um, not available when it's very cold, it can't be shipped. Um, if somebody does ship it to you and it freezes, it'll be ruined and it's not going to be replaced because the company does not uh, cover that sort of damage because they know it's not supposed to be shipped at this time of year. So it's a little late now if you don't have any, but if you don't, you know, use whatever kind of adhesive you want to use or like. Um, and if you want to get some, just remember, stock up in the fall as cold weather approaches. I live where it actually doesn't get cold, but, or at least it rarely gets cold, but it still gets cold where it's shipping from, so I still have to be careful of that. Okay, this paper is very pretty. That is good. I kind of like the dent. I think probably I could have just gone through twice and I might not have had that dent, but I am okay with that. I, it almost looks like it's embossed. It's supposed to be that way. Okay, now, oops, I trouble picking up my vellum. Here's our piece of vellum. 
around. I'm gonna go around the circle. Just to center that. That. sure I put it in um, the right way because I don't think I had my circle 100% dead center. That looks about right. it up so you can see through it and look on the other side just to make sure it's not off-center and let me get my own folder I want to make sure that's glued down okay so then as I said this will be underneath and I think that is going to look really nice. Okay. All right. I've got quite a few things cut for us to work on that I've decided on already. So I think I'm going to take these two pieces and just tuck them in the back for now because I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put those. And let's see. Let's put that aside. And put that aside. I'm not sure when we use that piece. Let's see where we're at. This is the piece for the cover. Okay, this we did already. It just it has a magnet, it just needs to be matted there. Here's a pocket. I haven't decided on this yet. This I have made already. I'll tell you what you need to do. This is gonna be a pocket. It's going to go in here like this with a flap that is going to go here and almost fully cover it, but not quite. So for the flap, you're going to cut a piece four and a half inches wide by five and a half inches long. Put the five and a half inch edge in your scoreboard. Here, let me grab mine. Okay, so put the five and a half and score at a half inch. And that's going to be your flap. Then you're going to take another piece, and I've already glued this, so it is. Hang on. You can hardly see this because it's dark. Uh, that would help if I had the ruler, so you can tell how blind I am. Okay, so it's five inches by five and a half. And you're going to score three of the sides. Okay, so you're going to, this is the five inches, and you're going to score at a half inch. Okay, a half an inch. So this, it's going to be five inches this way, score at a half an inch, and then rotate it and score at a half inch and a half inch. Okay, so that's your pocket. Now I have folded it and glued the two corners, and now I'm going to glue it into the book. with any anything you're gluing into one any mini album you don't want to glue it right up against the binding now give yourself a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch so that it doesn't hang up in the binding and um, I had already dry fit that to make sure it fits 
Make sure you dry fit yours and, and adjust your score line as needed. Okay, and just insert something in there. Make sure I didn't glue my pockets closed. That's fine. And then we're going to do the flap. And I am going to trim these the corners on my tab. Don't go past the, the score line. Just trim there. Okay, you can use uh, score tape for all of this if you like. Um, I, sometimes I, I do use score tape for assembly and sometimes I use art glitter glue. It's, um, they both work great. Just pardon my head if it gets in the shot. I just want to make sure that that's straight and along the edge. This is a dry baby wipe that I'm using. I use the CVS brand. I think I've told you that before. A lot of people like the Costco brand, but sadly, I do not have a Costco anywhere near me. Okay. So, there's that pocket. And on this page, we're going to do, I've cut two pieces that are going to go one on here on the outside and one on the inside, and they are just going to flip open. So, I'm going to need two pieces exactly the same, and they are okay, four and a half by six. Yes, and you want to score at half an inch and three and a quarter inches. Okay, and then after you've done that, fold them up like I have. You want to fold the tab to the back and then fold the uh, the other piece here over. And so you see how it looks. But odds are good that either between your scoring or your cutting, it's not going to be perfect. So just make any adjustments you need to. Trim as you need to. Adjust your score marks so that everything is even. Okay. And then we're going to glue these in. I'm going to go ahead and trim my corners again on these. They're all going to be hidden by mats. You can see on this one I had to adjust the, uh, the score. So I've got... I find, honestly, I have the, um, the little, this little EK tool scoreboard, and I've never really had a lot of issues with having to adjust score marks. But when I use my big Martha Stewart, a lot I have to adjust my score marks. I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's me that I'm not using it correctly, or I don't know. Okay, so we're going to line that up. Again, please don't line my head if it's in the shot. And you know what, I'm going to open it up. going to go like that and you could round these corners if you want and I might but I'm not going to do that until later if I do decide to do it. All right and now we're going to do the same with the other one. Like that. Okay. 
Okay. And then, let's see, that's going to flip open. This is plain, and this one is plain, and this is kind of where I was thinking of putting this, so I think I will. So let's go ahead, and I just smoosh that a little. And I have to pick out what I'm going to do to um, stretch that paper. And you know what? I'm going to... I've got a very big tab here. I'm going to go ahead and trim that. It does not need to be so large. Okay. That's going to go here. It's like that. The only thing is, let me just see. I'm afraid that's a lot of bulk. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to move this and I'm going to put it on, let's see. Maybe here, a page that has a gusset. Let me see. What else? Let's see. Where are all my gussets? All right. So this. Okay, so that's the first gusset. This is the second gusset. I put it there. And then the third gusset would be here at the back. So, I think maybe I will put it at the back. Sometimes when I work front to back, I find that as I get further and further back, oh, I've already got a flat there. I can't put that there. Okay, so it's gonna have to be on the second gusset. Now, I was saying as I work my way through the book, from front to back, if I go front to back. Sometimes I put most of my creative thought at the front of the book and I'm getting tired as I get near the back of the book. And that, so the, some of the less interesting pages are in the back, so I try to avoid that by skipping around a little bit. Okay. my usual uh, to make it a little easier to see this paper I get down, the better I like it. Okay. Now. All right. I feel like that's sticking down a little, but that's okay. All right. So now, I want that little, here it is. All right. So this piece here, needs to be, and I'm going to have to trim it a little, I cut it slightly big, just so I had some room to play. I think that's the spot. And what I think I might do that might make it easier all the way around is rather than just put a strip here and a strip here, I think I'm going to put a whole piece here and then I'm going to cut this square, like cut the two sides off, and put it on that square, on, on the, the whole mat. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, hang on one second. I'll be right back. I'm going to pick out something for that. All right, I am back. Um, and I picked out and put down a, um, a mat. And while I was doing it, I realized that I, in my usual fashion, didn't think about a magnet. And I probably should have put a magnet under this mat 
and under this mat. Too late now, so I'll figure out something else for that, but you should probably do that. Um, maybe even like on a corner, because this is pretty narrow, so you could put it here and here. Um, it'll have some heft to it. It may not actually need a magnet, but if you want one, do it. And the other thing I thought of, I had already cut this. I cut this before I did almost anything else because I wanted to make sure I didn't um, use it for something else. But had I thought, instead, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down. I'm only going to glue this side, make a tuck spot out of it. What would have been cool had I cut this longer is to make a belly band out of it and make it full length, but I didn't cut it that long. The other thing, let's see if I can find a scrap, hang on a second, that we could do, and I, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to, is I could make a belly band out of cardstock and apply this to that. And it had quite a bit of bulk if I did that. But it might be more useful than just a tuck spot. And I could just do it as a shallow um, belly band. In other words, not put any folds under it and just glue the two ends down and call it a day. And then glue this on it. It would be tricky because this needs to be perfectly centered under this circle. So let's think. I like that idea though. I kind of want to do that. So how can I do that? How can I make sure? Let's see. Well, before I do anything else, let's see if this piece, I probably ought to trim just a hair off of this. did that and then this was attached to it the whole thing let's see looks like it's actually centered let's see I have been just wiggling it around by hand and getting it centered, but grab my ruler. Let's try measuring for a change. All right, so the center of this circle is about two and three quarters from the edge of the mat, two and seven eighths from the edge of the paper. Okay, so if that's the case, then it would be two, uh, have to be two and seven eighths from the edge of this belly band. To the center of this circle, give or take. Let's take, let's take our tape scraps, and I'm not going to glue anything yet. All right, so let's say that's where that needs to go. Then the center from the bottom needs to be... and a quarter up from the bottom, give or take.
line that up with the edge of the paper. Okay, well, I must have measured something wrong because that's definitely not centered. It's a good thing I didn't glue it down. Okay, it needs to come over. That, that looks pretty good. That right there is right where I want it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tape, tape it so that it does not move. Okay, and looks pretty looks pretty straight. It's a miracle. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is just lift this edge up, take the pin off. Actually, gonna put the glue on the belly band. Okay, I am hearing some noise behind me. So it sounds like Jolly's getting into something. She usually is. What are you doing, sweetheart? Nothing. Sit. Oh, I don't know where Jolly went. Holly's sitting in the middle of the floor, yawning at me. Okay, there's that, and then this I'm going to lift up because I'm not going to make a tuck spot from it now, so glue that half down. Okay. This end with the belly band. Okay, and we'll remove our tape. Lift that. Hold it down because it's not dry yet, so you don't want to lift up the other end and lose your position. All right, now let us keep our fingers crossed and we did not lose our position. And we did not, that looks great. Okay, and again, use a magnet if you want. I did not, but I might figure out something. Oops, what you doing, Holly? Hmm? What you doing, holy jolly? All right. I like that. All right. So, let's see where we're at. This is going to be on the cover, unless I change my mind. So we've got this with a magnet, and I've just got a, a little card here holding it, because so, these magnets stick so hard, they're hard to get open. So that needs a mat. We haven't decided on this yet. We already did that. Now we have just a side flip pocket, and then we have a flip out. Um, haven't decided on this yet. Um, oops, looks like I got a little glue on that. Haven't decided on this yet. This is our belly band flip up with the window. This is our pocket, another pocket, another pocket, and a flip pocket. This is a side pocket flip. Okay, I think we've reached a good stopping point. We've got a lot done. And I will be back next time and we will continue on. Thanks for watching.